have to change our way of thinking. We have to believe from today that God is all forgiving, all loving. Even if you don't believe God is all forgiving or loving, you believe Jesus has come here and he has sacrificed for you. And I'm going to show you that what he said is true. I'm going to show you that really there is a God, Godfather, Godmother, or Buddha, whomever you believe. Allah, even anyone that you call his name by all your love or your beauty or your faith, that is the God who is always loving, never, ever, ever criticize you, even for one fraction of the second. Anytime you turn to him, no matter how badly you have done in your life, he will open the door immediately. That's why we call this way immediate enlightenment, because it is immediate. And every day you can repractice again and again until you completely remember that there's only God, one thing in this life is God, and He's everywhere. And then you'll be happy. You'll be happy from the day you see His light, the first day already, maybe today. If you trust me enough to offer this service to you, <laughs> you can have it right away, <laughs> no problem. You will see that whatever it is stated in the Bible, it is 100% truth. Like Moses has seen God, Jesus has been one with God, so that he become, or he's always been the Son of God. But he's not the only Son of God. We are also the Son of God. God is not important. He didn't make only one son. <laughs> he makes many. <laughs> It just, Jesus has remembered. He has remembered the highest self of his connection with God. He has remembered the whole thing, and we have not remembered. That's all. There were two sons of the king. One has been wandering all over the land and has forgotten that he is a prince. The other stay with the father and remember that he is a prince. Both are princes, yes. No difference. One day he remember, he come back, it's the same, yes. So we are the wandering sons and daughters of God. And the moment you want to go home is right there. Everything is created by thought only. For example, now we are in the physical body, so you do not understand much of the teaching of Jesus or Buddha, because it is says that Whatever you ask, your Father would give to you. That means whatever you think of, whatever you wish for, will be fulfilled. But we cannot believe that, because we are so imprisoned by this physical shackle we call the body. So in order to experience the boundlessness, love, the boundlessness, the all-pervasive, unconditional, eternal love of God, we have to rise above the body. And I will show you how to do that. It's very simple. You can do that on the bus, on the airplane, in the park, anywhere. There is no condition. I will show you how in a minute. And I can show you deeper, different level of forsaking the body. If you want to go deeper, there are some things you have to know more, so it takes a couple of hours to explain to you. But the enlightenment is just seconds. The explanation takes longer. Why explanation? Because you have to do it alone at home, so you have to know everything. Yeah? So take care of yourself and be your own master. Then you don't have to call me master anymore. You call yourself master. <laughs> oh, don't even bother. We are friends. Yes. Every one of us is equal. Equal. Truly like that. Too many things from here. Uh, slow down, please. <laughs> he talks so fast. <laughs> My mouth is not fast enough because in the higher dimension, we don't even talk. We understood each other just like I'm speaking to myself in my head. The message comes through so fast, sometimes I, I forgot. <laughs> I, I couldn't catch up. The reason we do not know we are one with God and everything we wish for or remember will always be right in front of our nose is because we are 
shackle in this physical body. So to rise above the body, there is a way to do that. So we can even contact Jesus, contact Buddha, contact Muhammad, whomever the past masters who has left the physical environment and enter another dimension. So in order to see them, we enter their dimension, and we see them. It's very simple. Okay, I want to see African people the most. I come here. And I want to see English people. I go to England. There are some English people who come to my place sometimes, or some South African brother come to my place sometimes, but they're rare. See, they want to see the whole African people. I come here. That's it. If we want to see the whole heaven or godhood or some celestial mansion, we have to rise up to their place, and we do that by thought, deep, deep, deep thought. I show you how to garnish your power of thought. In order to get out of this gate here and enter another dimension at will, any time you practice and you can do that any time, anywhere. So why the saints say that we have to learn to die so that you begin to live? Is that because if you learn to do this deep contemplation on deep thought prayers, then we can enter the dimension of the celestial being. And it's just similar to the moment of death to many, even ordinary people. Don't have to say practitioner, yogis, or anything. Ordinary people, when their conscience is clear, their life has been perfect example of goodness, when they die, they found themselves very liberated. They found themselves all pervasive, everywhere at the same time, and nowhere that they are not. And whenever they want something, that thing just comes right in front of them. Whenever they think of somebody, that somebody will appear right in front of them. In other words, they will project themselves immediately in front of the things that they desire or the person that they want to see. That's why when we learn to die, I mean, we leave this physical body and die temporarily. We have this kind of experience too. And then we can know exactly that really whatever we want, God granted to us, what God gives to us. It's just in this physical body, we are so blind, deaf, and dumb to celestial blessing, to God's love, that we feel so helpless. We are the most helpless when we are in this physical body. It is like you are locked in a box and the key has been thrown away in the river. It's like that, so helpless. That's why we have to learn to rise above this physical prison in order to truly experience the glory of love. Then we will be so happy every day that doesn't matter where we are, doesn't matter how much we have or not have, we will be always contented, always happy. That's why Jesus did not move in the face of death. He said, Father, how much you have glorified me. He accepted the crucifixion. He did not run away. He could have. He could have any time. A man of that power and knowledge, he can do anything, but he did not want to. Why should he run away from something that he knows can only make him feel more glorified, more happy, more liberated. Why should he feel attached to this little prison when he knows the vastness of heaven? Why should he be attached to relatives and friends of this physical dimension when he knows that he could see the Father in heaven and he knows all of the brother and sister all the relatives and friends are all one with him in the end anyhow. That is true liberation. There is no freedom compared to this freedom in God realization. That is the only true freedom that we should search for. I am willing to serve you in any way I can if you think you're ready to make this choice again. You had enough with 
in this life, you want to have different choice. But nevertheless, we do not forsake this world in order to go to heaven, no. We still can have both. For example, I'm still here. <laughs> I just enjoy heaven every day, but I enjoy also this life. You see, I, I enjoy your jewelry and <laughs> your clothes <laughs> very much. <laughs> Sometimes people who are spiritual, if they choose to be successful also in this life, they can also be successful. Different masters have chosen different ways to demonstrate the love of God. Some master has chosen the way of complete uh, renunciation, like Jesus, like Buddha. But some master has chosen to make use of the gift of God, or God has ordained them to do this. It depends on God's will whether you should be very rich materially as well as spiritually in this life, or you just be rich uh, materially and not spiritually, or just spiritually and not materially. Every one has to walk a different path but we are walking home to what God's dimension. And this is what we are here for. In case you ask me what's the purpose of human being, that's what it is. And thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> if you have any more questions, I'd be pleased to answer. Then I can show you how to remember God. I hope I made myself clear. Yes, you're so intelligent, my God. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> I'm not surprised. <laughs> African people are very, very spiritual. They're very much more in contact with nature. Very spiritual. Dear Master, what is the benefit of following a Master? Is it not perhaps a better prospect to be self-determined and to follow one's own path to enlightenment and to sort out one's own karma. Actually, in a way of speaking, you call me a master, but I told you already, I'm going to remind you that you are the master. That's all there is. And the karma and all that will go away as soon as you realize that you are the master of the universe, that you are one with God. But before that, if you have not uh, completely realized this, of course, i be your friend and help you until you, you understand everything. And you can call me master or you follow me. You don't have to follow me because I'm not here in Africa forever. <laughs> Just follow the instructions so that every day you can uh, contemplate deeply inside and then find God and then one day you will completely understand. You might even completely understand today. Depends on how much intense of your choice to go back to God. So you don't have to follow anybody, not even any physical or celestial being. You follow yourself. I'm just showing you how, showing you some instructions so that you... Because it's not that you don't know, you have forgotten. Because you, we live in this world, we're so busy with the survivals and everything try to bury us under these worries and suffering and then make us so busy and perplexed that we have forgotten. So I have already got out of the mud. I can pull a rope and get you out and then bath you again and you become just like me again, all clean, beautiful. Hmm? <laughs> How can you explain Adam and Eve? Should I explain about them? Look at yourself and you know. <laughs> Look at ourselves. <laughs> After initiation, how do we communicate with you if you are not here? I'm always here. I'm always here. You will see that. Sometimes you see me in your house. If you concentrate enough, yes, 
Besides, you can write to me. Mm. You can email, write a letter. Nowadays, very convenient. But the best communication is inside because we will be reconnected again with the whole universe. So whatever problem you have, the whole universe know, and of course I know, because I'm also connected in a network. So whenever you ask something, you have the answer right away, okay? But in case you're still not sure in the beginning, you can always write to me. But the answer is always inside, yes. There's a, there's a connection, yeah? 24 hours telephone service, no charge. <laughs> yeah, that's a wonder of being enlightened. <laughs> because the teacher has to be physically present every time with the disciples. Then it's, it's not convenient, it's not powerful enough. Because it <laughs> doesn't matter how powerful, how strong a teacher is, he or she cannot protect the disciple 24 hours by physical presence, but by the power of the universe, which the master, she or he, is connected already. I am not myself. It's not the physical body now that will be protecting you. It is a connection with the universal power through me that will protect you. That's why everywhere you are, that power knows and protect you and answer your question. You will not knock and it shall be opened, ask and it shall be given. Your prayers will always be answered. Your question will always be replied by inner connection. And that's the wonder of being in this enlightening ways of life. Otherwise, what's the use of having to even find a master through rivers and, and ocean again. And how long can you stay with her or him? Yes, even the master after initiation will continue to protect and guide you after the master has departed from this world. That is the meaning of being a master. Otherwise, you should not be a master. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Will we master the art of clairvoyance with the third eye? Oh, there's nothing. It's just a little child play. You don't aim for that. This is not the goal for you. <laughs> of course you will see things. You see everything. But you see the whole universe. Not just a little thing here and there. Not just your future and your past. You will master the whole life force. You will master the whole universe. That is the goal. I want to understand the Bible. Is that it? Yes. Well, then study it. <laughs> Read it. Yes, yes, I, I know. It is difficult to understand because a lot of uh, stories and terminologies in there are kind of mystical, yes? Unless we have the same level of consciousness, we find it uh, very difficult to understand. So just get enlightened, yeah? Stay around and I'll show you how to enter into the true experience of the Bibles. Because the Bibles, many are recorded of the experience, enlightened experience of the past practitioners, spiritual practitioners, yes? It's like, uh, for example, Jesus, when he meditated 40 days in the desert, of course, he communicated with God, yeah. And the devil also came to him and tempted him with the power of the three worlds. You understand what the three worlds is? It's very big. This world is already big enough. If somebody come and offer you to be the king of this, this whole world, will you like it? Of course you do already. And he's offered to be king of the three worlds. Above this world, another two worlds. But that's as far as the devil can rhyme, so he can only offer three words. And he say, get out of my sight. That's what Jesus say. I mean, get lost. This kind of experience. I'm sorry, we couldn't even see the devil, even if we want to, because <laughs> we are not able to, to see with the spirit yet. So in order to understand what Jesus have experienced, even to, to say to the devil, get lost. We have to study what Jesus has teach us. Walk his way. 
meditate like him. Go in the closet means meditate, means pray in silence, pray the properly. Let your eyes be single so that your whole body will be full of light. I will show you how to make your eyes single, how to find a single eye here so that you can see heaven. You can see the truth life, which is cheated on us because of this, all this physical appearance. We are cheated. We did not see the true life, but we can if we use the true eye. Then uh, that's, that's why I came here. <laughs> I will show you later. <laughs> 